in this video today, which is part four of a four-part series. That's right, this is the final video in the series brought to you by these Asioma power pedals. I'm gonna share with you what I believe is a very simple and easy to use cycling power graph that will, if you don't already currently use it, change the way you look at your cycling training and performance forever. Now, I can appreciate you need a power meter for this data, so this could be an incentive, this video, for you to save up your pennies and invest into a power meter, or for those of you who do have a power meter, this will hopefully compel you to look into the data a little bit more. Now, I am a coach at the Road Cycling Academy, so in this video, what we will be doing is using the same training platform that we use at the Road Cycling Academy, being today's plan, and that is where I will show you this graph. However, from my understanding, you can obtain this information from most, if not all, other cycling training platforms, so it's not just today's plan. And additionally, the data that I'm gonna share with you is not my data, it's from a gentleman called Ali from the UK who's been with the RCA for quite some time now, since April 2020. So we have a bit of data to look at, and if you wanna hear from Ali himself, there's a video story we did at the RCA, which I'll link to below, but I did wanna share a quick little snippet from that video now. Something I've always struggled with. So it's always just, you know, just keep going, keep going, don't stop, you know, just, and you gotta understand that, you know, you can't stay up here all the time. There's times when, <coughs> sorry, um, that you're gonna need to just ease it off a bit, you know, and then build it back up and go higher. So before I just go, yeah, yeah, I can do it. Just give me the sessions, I'll get it done. But now I'm starting to feel that, you know, I am tired and there's no point doing a session where it's just not gonna do anything for you because you're tired, you know, because you're constantly asking me, how do you feel? Do you feel like you can do the sessions properly or are you just getting it done? So that was the main question. I, I, and it took me a while for me to understand what you're asking me. And then I decided to ask myself those questions and then know, oh, I see, I get what he's trying to tell me here. So despite this power graph that we're gonna be discussing today and the subsequent data that you're gonna to wanna to go and analyze off the back of it, please always keep front of mind as your number one priority. How do you feel? Listen to your own body. So this graph here is the peak power curve. And essentially what this is telling us is Ali's best power per segment. So for five seconds, he can hold 1,252 watts. For one minute, 529 watts. For five minutes, 380 watts. All the way out to say 40 minutes, where he's recently PB'd for 312 watts, and you can keep going out further if you want. Also note that this graph is telling us most of Ali's PBs in power have been in the last six months. That's the darker blue line. This is since we've been collecting data since April 2020. And we can play around with the timeline if we want, but ultimately this is additionally telling us the training is working. And if we add the green line, which tells us his PBs from the 12 month period starting six months ago, He's clearly stronger now across the board. So there are three massive insights we can now leverage to our cycling advantage using this graph. But before we get into those three, I'm pretty sure once you appreciate this graph, you're gonna to wanna to dig further into the data. And with these Asioma power pedals, you're gonna be able to go a fair bit deeper, such as left-right power balance with their duo model, torque effectiveness and pedal smoothness. However, for me, it's more the mitigation of dropouts and erratic peak powers that makes these Asioma power pedals, which I've been using for some time now, so reliable. And it's that reliability that bolsters the data that we're gonna be looking at today. And as you will learn as we deep dive into this data, there's three critical pieces to the training puzzle which we'll touch on briefly today, including chronic training load, aka your fitness, acute training load, aka your fatigue, and training stress balance, aka your form, which all center around a training stress score that we give to each ride, thus having a clear understanding of our sustained efforts, our top end efforts, which should be definitive with Asioma's inbuilt gyroscope for instantaneous power readings, this is so critically important to understanding the stress that we've put on our system. You see some of these other power meters, they'll go an average reading versus instantaneous, which can lead up to a 4.5% error rate. And as you examine the data, more and more 
having a 4.5 or up to a 4.5% error rate is gonna affect what you're seeing. So having a reliable power source, such as Asioma, is so critically important to what we're looking at today. So insight number one is, what type of rider are you? Now I know many of you watching this will be like, I ride with my mates, I do the local group rides, I know what I'm good at. Well, Ali, he came to us, he does Ironman, that's what he's good at, that's what he likes to do. He rides with his mates, that's pretty much it. However, I still investigated his data and looked at his graph and I was like, hmm, Ali can hold over 1100 watts for 10 seconds. That's pretty good. I wonder if you can do that after a sustained effort because you might, Ali, enjoy doing some Zwift racing over the shithouse UK winter periods. He'd never done Zwift racing before. It turns out he went from C grade where he started and I told him to start in C grade just to get a feel for it for his first race to very quickly moving to A grade where he's even landed a podium or two. Due to looking at this power graph, Ali now loves Zwifting and I'm trying to convince him to get down for a criterium. Now to add further meat on the bone here, here's a spreadsheet from Hunter Allen who wrote a famous book, Training and Racing with a Power Meter. Here we have samples from thousands of cyclists at different levels and we can see power to weight ratio how we fare. Ali is roughly 15 watts per kilogram for his sprint, which puts him in roughly the good category for a sprinter. Now with Ali, he can output that sprint capacity after a 20 to 30, even 40 minute sustained Zwift race effort. So that's another factor you would also need to take into account here. Insight number two is are you improving? As I've mentioned in the series already, I like to think of cycling training zones as a weight rack at a gym. We understand what we need to lift in order to work different zones or different physiological systems. Additionally, we now know how much we can lift or how much power we can output for five seconds, 20 minutes, one hour, etc. We have tangible evidence of our capabilities now and moving into the future. So for example, Ali was recently Instagramming. He doesn't mind a story or two, so do I. So I was watching his stories and it was clear to me he just ripped out a monster climb in, I think it's, Palencia in Spain. So I immediately went and looked at his data. And at a workout level, I clicked on the peak powers graph and you can see he's done a 40 minute PB power, which validated that he did climb well. He certainly thought that because he was told any time under 40 minutes was great. He did it in 37 minutes, but we can also look at the data and He's just done a 40 minute PB. So we know from these types of efforts, if we're improving and if the training is obviously working. Insight number three, it shines a light on investigating what works best for you. Now we're talking about an individual here who's PBing, he's progressing, he's doing well. And obviously I've handpicked Ali, but the fact is sometimes people will train, they'll even train to structure and things won't be improving. So what if you're training hard and you go and do a race or you go do a hill climb or you go do an event and you really push it hard and you come back and all of a sudden you realize that you're nowhere near your PBs and this progresses for a period of time. Well, what you can do in this instance is go find the periods when you were PBing. Look at the data. Look at the training you were doing at the time and leverage it. But for this example, if we look at Ali's calendar, from history now, I know he performs better when we've backed off the training a bit leading into an event, but he likes to carry a little bit of fatigue just leading in. So the green, yellow, and red bars are an indication of fitness or chronic training load. And the colors of the bars, they're an indication of fatigue. Red being carrying fatigue, yellow being in between, and green being fresh. In an ideal world, we wanna see the bar graph rise over time, i.e. you're getting fitter, with some drops into orange and green to freshen up from time to time. But keep in mind, looking at this data, that Ali is a human being, he's a busy person, he's married, he's got kids, he owns his own business, so don't expect there to be perfection with what you see. There will be inconsistencies, however. Let's look at the week of 5th of September. Here he completed an Ironman and PB'd. He also PB'd again on the week beginning the 10th of October where he ripped out that 40 minute PB climb I just mentioned. 
And if we go back in time, and just so you know, Ali actually came to us with an FTP of 250, wanting to get over 300, and we initially got him to just below 300 after a round of base training and a block of intensity. But it was this downward trend, having a rest from it all, as he described at the start of the video, and coming back up again, backing it off here a little bit, and retesting an FTP where Ali hit 330 watts. So looking at this data, this kind of high level helicopter view data, we can start to see what works best for you as a cyclist. Are you better off during an intense round of training carrying fatigue into a target event or goal? Are you better off being fresh or somewhere in between? The point I'm trying to make here is everyone is different and we can leverage the peak power graph to our advantage. We can find periods where maybe we did two or three PBs. Maybe they correlated with an event where we also perform well. Go back and investigate the data. Look at the type of training you were doing. Look at your training load. Look at the fatigue management and so forth. If you got value out of this video today, please don't forget to give it a like. And if you're after more information on power training, I've got a free ebook here, which I'll link to below. I'll catch you in the next one.